You know, guys, how you doing? Today, I am going from Thessaloniki, Central Thessaloniki, which is where I am at the moment, to Arnea. Plan is to go there and look at a car. VW Golf GTI, year 2000, the Mark IV. It's the cheapest one in Greece, so that could be a good thing or a bad thing. We're gonna see when we get there. But we are in, I wanna say it's Pavla something, this street where we are at the moment. It is a road that leads down to the White Tower. We've got a sweet shop on the right, Constantinides. And to the right there, the road coming to us from the right is Metropolios. So yeah, the plan is to go, we're not gonna stop on the way there. We're gonna do it one hit to Arnea. It's about an hour's drive. Arnea, what is in Arnea? It is a small town. I'd say it's a small town. Uh, just above Halkaviki. I suppose it's somewhere that you can go for a, like a Sunday drive or a Saturday drive. Go get something to eat there. I suppose it's nice in the winter there. A lot of, um, for me, Arnea is the smell of wood fires in the winter. It's that kind of place. You could argue it's kind of a, a mezzo or light maybe for Thessaloniki, but honestly, I don't know how many people from Thessaloniki go to Arnea on the weekends. To the right of us is the, the Paralia of Thessaloniki. So we've just passed the White Tower there, those last traffic lights. And then you've got the seafront here on the right, which goes probably two kilometers, maybe three kilometers. You can walk right up to the end, and then there's a little park to the left of it if you want to come back a different way, or you can just go up the seafront and back on the seafront. On the right here, we've got the Macedonia Palace Hotel, the, the Paralia, the Promenade. It's very nice, very nice. Great views of Olympus from, if you go right, from the White Tower towards the port, you get a fantastic view over Mount Olympus in the evenings. Generally, the Paralia, the Promenade of Thessaloniki is fantastic uh, at sunset. It's uh, very, very good views. And then we just come to the end up, up here. I don't know if how well you'll be able to see some tall buildings on the right. And that's basically the end of the uh, of the Paralia, as they call it, the promenade. There is a warship up here on the right. Maybe you can just see the antennas for it. I think that is the Velos, and that is a museum now. It's okay, it's not a massive ship, and you can't really go all over it. You can go around it, but not, not all over it. The history of that ship is it was a gift from the American government to the Greek government. Uh, the Americans used it in the, the War of the Pacific against Japan when it was the military junta in Greece. The Greek Navy, the Greek Navy was on maneuvers I think with NATO and the captain of that ship, what can you say, deserted against the the military hunter that was in the Greece at the time. But long story short, I think that the captain of that ship that did that, when the hunter ended, I think he became like the admiral of the uh, Greek Navy, I think. But is it worth going for a look? Yeah, why not? I think it's five euro on. I don't think it's horrendously expensive to go on it. I'd say it's worth it. There is a uh, butcher on the right here, which is decent enough. It's called uh, Meeting Place. And it's open until late as well. I think at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. This is Calamaria, and this specific area, as we round this corner, is sort of the area where furniture, furniture shops are, lighting, home decoration, home, furni home furnishings and home furniture in this area now up until the next couple of corners. So I'm not sure on the prices, they all seem pretty high-end, but in Thessaloniki, everything looks pretty decadent, even if it's uh, very cheap, so hard to say. And then we're coming out onto the main road to Thessaloniki Airport here. 
got a few gas stations on the right if you need them. We've got a Plesio on the left, on the other side of the road. So that's your uh, stationery shop, computing supplies, electronics, things like this. It's a decent enough shop. Nicely presented, friendly staff. Prices are decent. And then we're just going to turn left here. If you're interested, there's a McDonald's drive through about uh, 200 meters down here on the left, just after the bus station. If you're looking for a McDonald's, we've got these guys here, very friendly enough, friendly enough guys um, doing the windows. I don't usually get the windows clean, but if they're selling uh, packets of handkerchiefs, I'll get one. So as we turn left here, there's going to be another furniture place on the right, Mexil. And if you turn right into there, there is a cinema and supermarket. Look at this for fucking driving. Holy shit. Personally, I don't go there. It's not my scene. I think there is a better cinema in Mediterranean Cosmos, which will pass in a minute. But the supermarket there is massive. It seems busy enough, so good for them. So, this is the road to Halka de Key that we're just coming up to now, that we're joining. And we'll take this road up to Neoricio, where we will take a left towards uh, Vasilika, Tagarade, Suruti. So, on the, on the left here, we've got a planetarium. Probably can't see it from where you are. Let me just turn it. That's the planetarium. It's supposed to be all right. Never been there myself. And then on the right, we've got a Mediterranean Cosmos, which is like a shopping mall. And they've also got a cinema there as well. And a big food court. Super popular, the food court. For the cinema, I'd say go there. If you're looking for a cinema around Thessaloniki, that's not in the centre. It's the only one I know of, to be fair. Um, but if you're looking for shopping, I would say go to One Salonica, not Mediterranean Cosmos. I ignored One Salonica for many years, always just thought of Cosmos. But I think I'd be missing out. I think One Salonica is a much better mall. More brands, and I think it's a little bit of an outlet you feel. You get very some, you, there's some good deals to be had in one Salonica. It's the opposite side of the city. Definitely takes a bit longer to get there if you're coming from this side, from the east side, but I'd say it's definitely, definitely worth going to one Salonica. I would say it is much better than Mediterranean Cosmos, in my opinion, for what I want at home all. I like my designer labels and I like to have a deal. So for me, and I like variety as well. So for me, one Salonica all day long. And then we're coming up to here. If you go to the airport, you can also take this road to the right here, and this will take you directly into the airport. You can also, that last junction before this one, you could, I think most people would turn right there and cross over the bridge and go to Thermi to go to Arnea. And I think if you look on Google, Google Maps, we'll say it's quicker. But personally, I don't like that road, it's very busy. Uh, there's a lot of junctions and it just seems to take forever to get to Vasilika, so I don't like it. I travel a few more kilometers and I go to Risio and then cross from there to Tagarades, uh, Agia Paraskevi, Suruti and Vasilika go that way. It's going to take a bit longer I think, but the time flies on it. It's a very nice road. That's my take on the way to do it and why I'm going this way in particular. Uh, this area that we're coming to now, we've got a bit of a plain here. I can, I can never remember the name of it. I think I want to say Anthemundas Valley. So there's a huge valley on the left, which we are going to be driving up uh, shortly. And this has got a lot of uh, historical sites in it. But I think everywhere you look has got a lot of historical sites. But they have done some uh, digging in Anthemundas Valley which is more than what you can say for the, um, well, more intensive digging in other areas. So they found like um, Bronze Age 
uh, towns and what have you and ruins and um, basically a lot was going on in this area and they don't really know everything seems to have stopped around the Bronze Age I think around 300 400 BC don't quote me on that something around there but you can say that for the Aegean in general I think there was some sort of catastrophe around that time they found a mass grave up in uh, Surudi that is going to be you know, Bronze Age as well. I'm not sure how well it's going to come out on camera, but if you look on up to the right here, you can see a hill with a flat top on it. That is an old Acropolis. Acro, I think, is Hill Polis's city, like a city on a hill, Acropolis. And they've, they started digging on that, I think, five years ago. And I think they did a couple of summers and then they stopped. But if you go, you can actually go up there from the Rishio side and you can have a look at what they've been digging. I mean, they've covered it in plastic and what have you, but there's, I think that is potentially a huge site. But this is a thing with Greece that, at least in Macedonia where I am, there is literally historical sites everywhere, but very little, if any, archeological digging. It's a really big shame. I think the biggest, findings that they made were during the sort of the 60s and the 70s and uh, during the second world war i think they did a lot when the british army were in greece they found uh, like a uh, tuba in uh, thessaloniki suburbs for example that i think all that was excavated by the british army but there's sites literally everywhere i mean everywhere you look there's a potential archaeological site and the ones that they do dig There are like different tumbas around where they've dug, I don't know when, 60s, 70s, 80s. And it's not going to be a big excavation. It's going to be, you know, like four meters by four meters, for example. And they'll dig down, you know, a couple of meters, two, three meters. And then they'll leave it. And then they just cover them with tin over what they've dug. And then they'll just leave it forever. There's many tumbas around where you can see that. The t with the tin covering the holes that they've dug. <clears throat> it's, it's, um, it's a shame that they don't do more with it, I think. I'm not sure why, why there isn't more being done. Because you could definitely make archaeological tours around uh, Macedonia, I think. So we've just turned off there from Risho. We've turned left and now we're heading on basically the main road to Vasilika, well, Suruti. through these small villages. I think this one is Agia Paraskevi. It's Agia Paraskevi or it's Tagarades. Hello. Just got the one traffic light. But this is very typical of a uh, uh, town slash village in uh, Greece. But this is actually probably newer than most of them. So a lot of new building went on here, I suppose, in the uh, in the 90s and the 2000s, maybe it's actually it's not that typical. Scratch that. So that was that. Now we're back on the open road. Don't know. I don't know if he's going to freaking turn left because he didn't look like he was looking where he was going. So yeah, this is what I mean. It's a pretty straight road here. The surface is horrible, but you know, if you needed to overtake something, you could. Make quite decent progress. Welcome to the municipality of Vasilika. In the summer, there is a bar restaurant here buried into the into these uh, trees, <laughs> which seems very popular. And then they've got another one here, which is the last just before Corona had started do beers and uh, food I think and this is also doesn't look like much but it is super busy in the summer in the evening so good for them and I think this is Agia Paraskevi now this is more typical with the, the one floor houses
whereas where uh, before uh, Tagara there's just more apartments next to the road so the, the apartments will be newer and the, uh, the, these one level houses and bungalows and what have you will be older but it's not big, it's very big to the right and so was Tagara this is a lot happening to the right but it's on the side of a hill I suppose they don't want to do much with it with their farming and that is it So we're coming with this. We're in the, the start of the Athamundas Valley here. So we've got hills to our right and we've got hills to our left. You can see it's a pretty wide valley. Mountains on the left are probably, they're around, uh, it's like 700, 700 meters most of them, but it goes up to a thousand, some of them, some of the peaks. And on the right, probably around 600 meters. We're coming into Suruti. It's famous for its uh, water here. They have uh, springs, I expect. And the factory is just in here on the right. I don't think they do tours or anything, but you can go up there and see the factory if that blows your skirt up. And now we're just going to come into the, the center of Suruti here. And we're going to take a left here. You could take a right there and that would take you down to the first leg of Hakadiki. But we're not going there. So that's going to be it for now guys. I'll check back uh, once we're in uh, Vasilika probably. So we're just coming into Vasilika here. This is a uh, big farming town here, big agricultural town. I don't know where they got your animals, vegetables, all sorts. Gonna give way to the right. So this is a new shop here, I think, new coffee place on the right. Looks very fancy. So this is the main road through uh, Vasilika from Rusio. It's quite frosty at the moment in the night. I think the temperature is getting down to two, four Celsius. And just driving along the road there, and in the shadows, it can be very dewy and super slippery. So, we're just crossing the. Uh, this is. I think this is could be the main river going down Athamundas here. This is the center of uh, Vasilika here. Got a supermarket, coffee place, some sort of thing in front of us. Not really a commuter town. Tagarades, you can see that with a new apartment building, that's turned into a bit of a commuter town for Thessaloniki. I'd say Vasilika is not one of those things. Not yet, anyway. If we took the road through Thermi, this is where we would have, uh, this is the road that we would have uh, been on. So this is the main road now to, eventually this will go to Poligiros is the first, where it really ends, but if you drive through Poligiros it goes to Gerakini uh, is where it joins the, the coastal road on the way to the second leg of Agadigi. So like we're in the thick of the Anthemundas Valley now, you can see I know this is probably 400 meters, this hill on the left. They've just widened this road, but it took them fucking, it took them years to make this. Years and years and years of road works and bloody diversions. I really, I don't understand it. The only thing they've done is make it a bit wider. It seems, um, I don't know, I don't know what to say. A lot of work for the result, if you know what I mean. And now we're coming to a new section which they've just built and I think actually I'm going to take the old road. The old national road. Can I get over for the cyclists? So this is the old road. To, um, this is the old road to Poligiros. Like I said, they just built a new road there on the right. 
but honestly, it's, I don't really see, um, I don't really like it. It's full of bends. also just been widened from what it was this was quite a narrow uh, one lane each way road before so it's they've, uh, yeah, they've basically doubled the width of it and we're coming up to a Galatis, Galatis, Galatista on the left is a Byzantine tower in the town there it's a bit ruined but it's still standing that would be in the old road there that turned off on the left uh, this has been here as long as I can remember, so it's got to be 15 years. It was bypass. But yeah, Galatista is on the... Uh, but not to it yet. I don't know if you can see it in the distance there, up on the left, those houses. Quite a relatively big town. I think they had a bit of quarrying going on here at some point, but it's largely agricultural in the, around these parts. This is the long... Uh, this is the final climb out of the Athamundas Valley now. If you can see the railings at the top left there, that's the old road. Quite a big time saving this this little bit, this section here because that is super twisty. The old road. So we're just coming up to the brow of the the hill, and unfortunately, we've got a minibus stuck behind the truck. And the old road rejoins here from the left. Basically, we're going to kind of roughly follow the the route of the old road here until uh, Agios Prodromos. How many floats going on? try to make a point I mean everyone needs to overtake somebody at some point so everybody just gets along people are quite open to people being overtaken it's not like in Britain where people think it's pushing in if you're overtaken so we're just taking the left now this is the old road again to Poligiros so you can imagine how far away Poligiros was when this was the main road. I mean, it was, you know, a fair old distance. This is Agios Prodromos, famous place for souvlaki, on the way back from Akadiki, apparently. Personally, I've had souvlaki here a couple of times. I wasn't really that impressed with it, to be fair. But you, know, you can see how many tavernas and restaurants there are here. I think they do quite good business in the summers on the Sundays, you know. The rest of the year? Yeah, traditional old village this. Traditional buildings. Well, traditional buildings built around 1910, 20, 30, 40, up until about the 50s. A 
And now this is all new here. They've just uh, this road has been closed for about a year, and that bend is much less sharp than it was, and it's a bit wider. And now this, the road we're on now, it is the old road, the Poligiros, but it is also the uh, main road, the old main road to, it's the old main road to Poligiros, but it's still the main road to Arnea. And then the old road to Poligiros, you turn right, you'll turn right here for that. But we're just going to continue straight on, and this will take us to uh, Arnea which is our final destination. This is the type of car I'm looking at, Mark IV Golf. Mark IV GTI. Um, and the, the key thing is with it, why I'm going so far to look at it, is that it's a five door. There are so many three doors around. It's easy to find a three door, but the five door GTIs are, are, are very few and far between. I need to see, I need to see the engine when it's cold, stone cold. So I said this to him when I called him, can I see the engine when it's cold? And he goes, what do you mean? I know, what do you mean, what do I mean? When it's cold, I, when the water in the engine is cold. So he said, yeah, 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 you can see however you want, so we'll see if it's going to be a cold engine when I get here. One thing I've found, I've been looking for a car for over a year, so I've gone to a few places now. One thing I've found, this is going to be super treacherous, this uh, little uh, road here. Damp and cold. Is people do not want you coming to their house to view the car, which to me makes absolutely zero sense because when you look at the car, you're obviously going to check the license for the car and that's going to give them, and you're going to be able to see the address and the name of the owner. So really I don't understand why people are so touchy about viewing the car at their home. Completely crazy if you ask me. Everybody wants to meet you somewhere. Why? Very strange and luckily, um, the cars that I've seen until now, all the problems that they had were obvious even though the engine was not, uh, not cold. But the last one I went to see, that was at a dealer, I just turned about the blue, that engine was cold and it was smoking when it was cold. But once it warmed up it was fine, so that was just another reinforcement for me very important to see the engine when it's cold because if an engine is warm you can hide many 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 problems so i might even just walk away um i might just walk away from this car if i get there and the engine's warm and this is another reason why i don't like traveling massive distances to see a car this is only this is only an hour away, so relatively speaking, this is close. But I have... I need to take a piss somewhere. But I have travelled... Um, what's the furthest I've travelled? Four and a half hours to go and see a car. And the car is not as described, and the engine has been warm when I've turned up. It's just... You're putting a lot of trust in that person, that the car is going to be as you... is as they say. So yeah, the, I've been to look at many cars by now, and that has been, without fail, every time, this is the reason I don't have the car, is because none of them have been, as they've been described, like they'll say, doesn't need a euro spent on it. Well, the ones that I've been to have always said, doesn't need a euro spend on it, excellent condition, no problems, uh, the mileage is such and such, and there's always something major in all the cars that I've gone to see so far. And that is, um, that's problematic, you know, because I have been traveling, you know, reasonably decent distances to see some of these cars, to 
two hours, three hours. The longest one was that four and a half hour one when that didn't even have the engine that he said it had. There was one, uh, I went to see some uh, one similar to this, Mark IV Golf, five door GTI with a dealer. And again, excellent condition, blah, blah, blah. When the ABS problem, uh, misfire, and fucking all the fault codes because the car just wasn't ready to sell. I don't know where he got it from. Anyway, the car just wasn't ready. I mean, I must be the first person to go and look at it. So, you know, there's always been a problem. So we'll see what this one is like. So we just come, uh, I think it's called Riza. We just pass through. So we come onto like, it's a bit of a unique landscape now. It starts to get a bit rockier, a bit bushier from now until Arnea basically. We've got the rocks on sort of on the left and we've got a bit of farmland on the right. So it's a pretty great road, but uh, you need a pretty fast uh, car to enjoy it. Arnea, 13 kilometers. I said they'd be there about 11, 12, and at the moment it's 11, 50. So um, it should be absolutely bang in the window. A bit treacherous at the moment, a bit damp in places, but very, very nice road this. This year must be a no entry sign. Got to be. Yeah, 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 it is, it is, it is, it is. Can I smell log fires today at the moment? Um, no. So yeah, this is Arnea. This is the main road through Arnea. How much was the road she made? Very typical with a balcony sticking out over the road. Now you can smell the wood burning, the wood fires. And this is the uh, center of our Nea. Εξωτερικό από το Δημαρχείο. Πού? Δημαρχείο. Ε, λοιπόν, πού να σε πω τώρα, ρε γάμο, εγώ έκανα τη Σαουδική. Πε μου και πάλι. Έχει κανέναν άνθρωπο γνωστό από την Αρνέα, Αν ξέρω άνθρωπο εδώ. Ναι. Τι εννοεί. 
Ma che... Ma che punto sto chiedendo? Come ne metti? Μιλούσαμε χθε, δεν είπα ότι δεν μιλούσαμε. Σου είπα θα είμαι εδώ στι 12. Μπορεί να πάω. Πόση ώρα θα είσαι να λέει έτσι. Μόνο για το κόφι είμαι εδώ. Ναι, πόση ώρα θα κάτσει εκεί. Πόσο λεπτά θέλει. Περίμενα να πάρω ένα τηλέφωνο. Πού είσαι τώρα στο δημαρχείο. Ναι, ναι. Στο πλατεία εκεί. Τι αυτοκίνητο έχει. Focus, Ford. Ford Focus. Τι χώμα. Άσε με. Πώς είναι. Richard είμαι εγώ. Εντάξει, περίμενε λίγο σε πέντες πέντε λεπτά. Οκ, Νίκο. Ωραία, τσάου τσάου. So I had a worst case scenario in my mind, but it turns out it wasn't worst case scenario enough. You've got that phone call there, basically. The guy is not even here. I phoned him yesterday, I said, I'll meet you, I'll be in Armea between 11 and 12, fine, he said. So I called him now and he says, I'm not here, I'm an hour away in the t in Thessaloniki where I've just come from. So he said, how long can you wait? Well, I said, the only reason I'm here is for the golf. He says, have you got a friend here? I said, I don't know anybody here. So he said, okay, let me call you back. So he called me back and apparently he's going to send his mate or somebody to meet me driving a white polo, so I don't know where this is going to go. Oh, the adventures of traveling to see used cars, you know? Anyway, that's it for now. I'll check back, um, I don't know, maybe we're on, on the way to see the car. We'll see. So this is them in front. It's a silver polo, not a uh, white polo. 20 minutes later. So, just saw the car. And like I specifically asked him, uh, I asked him yesterday, I want to see the engine cold. Is it, oh, can I see the engine cold? He says, yeah, no problem. So I go there now and the engine's warm. They obviously used it this morning. And that, as I said earlier, that can hide a multitude of sins. So that was a big alarm bell. I also thought the engine um, was stock. Not that there was any photos of, it, of the engine bay in the, uh, in the advert but looking at the car I just had the impression that it was stock and it, it wasn't it had a um, a K N panel filter on it which which I'm not a fan of at all uh, it also had a dump valve on it which I suppose you know nothing uh, I'm not against that but it's not a stock engine. Uh, and the side, I don't know why, it's the second Golf I've seen where the sill is at the front of caved in. Uh, generally, it's, look, for a, for a Mark IV Golf 2000, not too crusty, pretty, not too bad at all. But for a uh, Thessaloniki standard, or Greek standard, a bit crusty. Didn't really notice any. Um, oil leaks on it to be fair, look pretty dry the engine bay, it sounded decent enough, the clutch seemed a bit high on it, so that was a bit of an alarm bell but generally I just didn't, it didn't feel right.